Good morning, everybody. Hope that your Wednesday is off to a good start. Mine is so far. I've got a good cup of coffee here with me. And I um, want to reflect for a few minutes on maybe a new twist on an old doctrine. Um, a new twist on an old doctrine that has um, a particular, particular meaning for me. Um, and it's this old doctrine, it's, it goes back to the Protestant Reformation, and it's you know, referred to as the priesthood of all believers. So, well, what in the world is the priesthood of all believers? If you go back to the Protestant Reformation, it was the idea that we as believers don't need priestly intermediaries, that Christ is our great high priest, and that if Christ is our high priest, then we don't need earthly priests. Um, <clears throat> at the time of the Reformation, there, if you think about the context of that and practices of the Roman Catholic Church, um, they had this notion that the only the priests could read and interpret the Bible, um, that to be forgiven of sin you had to go to a priest and have the priest hear your sin and grant you confession, um, grant you absolution. And Martin Luther and the other great reformers were strongly of the belief that all believers are priests, that all believers are priests, that the average Christian, that every Christian has the ability to read and interpret the scriptures um, that we can confess our sins directly to God because Christ is our high priest and is interceding for us and we don't need um, a we don't need a human priestly intermediary and that is a, and that is right those two doctrines are true the we have Bibles now in English and in hundreds of different languages, and there are dozens, if not hundreds, of English translations of the Bible, and we can pick and choose whichever one we want to read because we have this belief that the Bible is for the is for everybody. Is not simply to be in the hands of the religious professionals. Um, <clears throat> so here's a new twist on that. I'd like to introduce you to a new twist on the priesthood of all believers, which I think, um, or I hope, will be meaningful for you and powerful for you. So I first thought of this a couple of years ago, three years ago, I went to a conference. I went to a workshop on opioid addiction. And so one of the speakers was talking about her son. Um, her son was battled, was struggling mightily with addiction to opioids. And she had gone to she had gone to church on a Wednesday night for a Bible study and had, for the first time, opened up in that Bible study about the struggles her son was having, struggles her son was facing, and she hadn't slept in days or even weeks and was just a wreck. She was just a wreck, and she said that when she got home, she hadn't been home more than 15 minutes when one of the ladies that was in the Bible study with her called her and said, look, I'll pray for your son tonight. You get some sleep. And that is the priesthood of all believers. If we think of a priest as someone who intercedes with God on behalf of another, that is... That is an example of priesthood. And the woman who called her and said, you sleep tonight and I will pray for your son. The woman who called her is being a priest on behalf of the other. 
And that is just as valid an interpretation or application of this old notion of the priesthood of all believers. Sometimes when we when we're really messed up inside, um, it's really hard for us to pray, even know what to pray. Um, and that's where this old doctrine can have new life. We can have other people pray for us. You know, when in my mother's um, recent illness and death, I I felt that um, I was too too torn up in here to even know how to formulate a prayer. But I knew that there were others that were praying for me and with me. Um, and that is a powerful thing. When you know that somebody is struggling and you and you go to God on behalf of that other person, you're being a priest. And sometimes prayer like that is hard. Sometimes it's hard work when it's, you know, it, you're, you know, literally tears, you're, you're groaning with another person. And that's good. That is a good and a beautiful thing to intercede with God on behalf of another person. Somebody who is struggling mightily, who for whatever reason can't even put words together, and you're going, you're going before God Almighty, going before the throne of grace on behalf of somebody else. And that is being a priest in the very best sense of the word. And that is a really, really good and powerful application of an old, old doctrine. So... When you know, if you know somebody who's going through a tough time of it, somebody who's really struggling with whatever. Um, in my case, it was um, yes, the, my, my own mother's you know, health crisis of the last month and her death a week ago, week and a half ago, um, or in a personal illness or family trouble or work trouble or substance abuse, whatever it may be, if you know somebody that is really struggling with something, go to bat for them. Be the priest for them. When we are really struggling like that, it's hard, it's hard for me to be a priest for myself. It's hard for us to be a priest for ourselves, but we can be a priest for another person. If you know somebody that's really struggling, give that person a call and say, I'll pray for you. I will go to the throne of grace for you on your behalf. I know that you're going through a tough patch, but I will go to the throne of grace on your behalf. And that is a powerful and a beautiful thing. So I'll encourage you, um, as you have the as you have the opportunity to be a priest for one another. Have a great rest of your Wednesday.